is one of those Polish Lavu shelters, teepees, tents, however you want to call them. Um, I wanted to try something inspired by a few videos on YouTube. Um, it's a very, very cheap, basic, not too bad quality um, piece of uh, kit, especially for summertime. Um, it's December now, so I've left it very, very late. I should have done this back in the summer, if truth be known, but Hey ho, we find out about these things whenever we find out about them. So, um, what I wanted to do was um, modify mine. Now, a lot of people would just use the basic setup as it is without doing anything to it. And it's all like um, button down um, fastenings holding two ponchos together because that's basically what it is. So, I decided to get a zip put on mine. Um, but I haven't got a sewing machine um, and I haven't got the experience uh, <laughs> to use it. So, you know, to, to buy a good sewing machine for one, two hundred pound, a good quality one, that's built for hard use, not the cheap sewing machines. It's cheaper to um, find someone who knows what they're doing to do it for me. So let's bring you in closer and um, see what it's all about. Well, there we have it. A nice, brand new um, Polish Lavu poncho. One side of it, anyway. Now, we have some... Uh, slits there for your arms to go through um, basically what they are and I'll tell you what these um, little points that come with it excellent piece of kit and also the tent pegs you know don't discard them because they look cheap they're tailor made for it now as you can see the, uh, the slots there so you can lower them to different levels and you can just push it down with your boot or your hand or whatever very very lightweight and uh, not too bad on the grass but in the forest with roots and flint who knows all looks good right not too bad at all and as I say for the price they cost you know under 20 pound it's incredible value granted no problem at all but it is important to do this sort of thing when you've got a bit of downtime in the garden or somewhere local you know you don't want to be getting it out the bag taking it to the woods and the snow and then putting it up for the first time the chances are you're gonna have cold hands and some of them buttons they're easy to do but once you put the top layer over so you've got like three pieces of material going through the buttonholes it could be quite tricky especially for you poor people who bite your nails you're going to really struggle with something like that so get up in the garden and give it a little test to see what you've got and to be honest I'm glad I did because I'm not happy and let me show you why Right, this is a bit weird, isn't it? Well, we're inside now because what happened was after I've done all the filming, I'll come indoors to edit the video, and it turns out um, the little piece of the the faults um, on the outside didn't record. So I'm still getting used to this camera, guys. So bear with me. As I said, we've got a nice brand new piece on one side. Very happy with that, as described on the advert on the internet. On the other half, it's really old. It's beat up and it ain't good. In fact, I would, I would grade this as a grade 2 um, piece of equipment. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, the brand new stuff, which is this size, would be um, super grade, never been used, or unissued. Incidentally, looking at it, this looks like it's had a repair on it as well. Which, this is a brand new piece, and that bit's been patched up, I'm not friggin' happy with that. So look on the inside. not sure about that anyway going back to the grade 2 piece when you buy something brand new you don't expect to get that in the post that's just shit if I'm honest um, the stitching's come completely away from there as I say it's old it's been pulled about a bit not good at all and it does feel quite patchy and thin in places now I know you're going to say well what are you bitching for it's under £20 what do you expect I've got no problem with that but the problem I've got is when the advertiser is brand new you expect brand new you don't expect to get shit 
And uh, yeah, look, it's supposed to be brand new with some grommets in there, but as you can tell, that's proper foo bar. That's no good, no good at all. And it, yeah, you can just tell it's just got general wear all over it. And look, the more we look at it, there's bloody holes cut in it. That's starting to go on the grommet there. That's, that's no good at all. So um, I'm not sure if um, Military Mark grade these themselves or they buy them in bulk. See, look, all the grommets are starting to come off. That shit, that's no good. So if you're going to invest time and money into modifying something like this, you know, it's probably best if you get a nice brand new one like you should and uh, do it properly. I'm not impressed so far. Right, okay, that's just a little quick overview of the shit side of the tent. Let's get back outside and show the rest of the video. Well, it looks like a good quality canvas as well, with some waxed thread, which is always good. Put some Velcro fastenings in there, and um, I do like these zips. Now, I originally asked him for um, big, heavy-duty brass zips, but he just said they just wouldn't be good for this sort of thing. So he's put these ones, nice big chunky zips. And as you can see, they're zipped on the inside, so you can unzip and zip up inside or outside. And it's just sewn the whole thing all the way out there. So I'm mega impressed with that. It's done a good job. And also he's put some of these extra grommets in the bottom, which weren't there. And that's another thing, on this used, um, I'd say, possibly grade two condition um, part of the Lavu tent from Military Mart, there was another eyelet missing around there, so it's not looking good. So, you know, if you want a quick fix, you know, always check it first. Um, yeah, this is the, the piece of material I was telling about in a little bit more detail for those of you who are interested on doing something similar or copying whatever you want to do. And that's all we've got there, is the D-ring. And uh, there we have it. I don't know how long that's going to last as it is, but something's going to need to be done about that. Absolutely. And some of the, the uh, stitching is starting to fray along the bottom there. Um, to be honest, I like these ideas, as I said earlier, um, it keeps it off of the floor, so for a long-term shelter, you don't really want this contacting the floor, because that's just going to um, rot and get damp in time, so you want to keep it up on, off the ground, um, get some airflow in there, it's a good idea. Winter time, oh, I'm not so sure you might need to sort of cover this with something, unless you want ice cold air blasting through there. But, um, you know, it's a trial and error thing, and uh, the only way to find out is to try things out. So, onto the canvas. It's, um, it's very, very thin. Very thin. Um, so you do have to be careful. Um, I should imagine if you wanted heavy duty stuff, it's going to weigh a ton. So it's not really um, portable. But you compare that to the 9x9 tent. Now this sort of stuff that the British Army uses is absolutely friggin' bomb proof and built to last. And it will last. It's like a ripstop solid piece of canvas. But if you wanted um, the Lavu made of that stuff, it will weigh an absolute ton. Well, this was um, stuck on the outside um, via a buttonhole. So if any of you guys can speak Polish, <laughs> there's lots of info in there. It looks like 1975 date of manufacture. So um, I'm not sure, I can't remember now if I took this off of the new piece or the old piece. Um, I think it was the new piece it's just been stored very well. I'm not sure, I'll just pull it all up quick. Well, there's all the pieces come out there. You've got to check them all, make sure you've got them all, rather than leave them in the ground and forget. Give them a good wash, dry. Probably a bit of um, WD-40 stowaway. And I think I'm gonna leave these um, tied to the uh, eyelets, um, just to make it easy when you do set it up. Otherwise, I'll have to go around taking them all off and put them in the bag. So undecided. Also, the plan was today was to get it waterproof, so you don't really want to get it wet. The grass is damp and wet, so I thought what I'd just do is just put some cardboard down on the floor and work around it, and it seems to have done the job. So there we have it. Everyone should have a rusty old beat-up barbecue in the garden. It's the UK law these days. You can't get away from it, if I'm honest. Um, the original plan was to use this, um, Fab Seal Gold. 
Now, to be honest, if I am going to be using this in the snow and in heavy rain, I want to get the best that I can afford. And the best that Fabsil done was the gold stuff. Now, apparently they use this for doing um, all sorts of heavy duty stuff, sails and whatnot for marina use. So the idea was, was to pull that neat into a quality street container or any old container and just use an old brush that we used decorating. But I think what I might do is wait till this goes back so that gets put on the outside and then I'm going to uh, put it up um, and get it all waterproofed. It's a shame because today's weather is set fair all day and uh, you know it's taken so long to you know decide what I'm going to do once I've been faffing around trying to set this up and um, to be honest it needs six hours to dry and I don't really want to rush into something like this. So there you have it the correct thing to do um, would be to tell um, Military Mart about this cock up. Um, they'll probably send a brand new replacement, but I'm going to need to get all of this unstitched and um, redone on the new piece, which is going to cost even more money and time. And obviously, with Christmas um, a few days away, you know, it's not a good idea to ask people to do stuff like this. So, the dilemma is um, do I paint it now with the waterproofing? Do I wait and get that fixed in a, in a couple of days time hopefully and then hopefully waterproof it then or do I scrap the whole idea, get a proper brand new one from Wilderness Leisure if they've got any left and get it all done again? Answers on the postcard. <laughs> but there you have it, I just thought I'd give you the heads up. As I say, I'm not sure if this is a one-off or if anyone buys these things from that website. Um, you know you are told you are getting a brand new one and in fact you're getting half new and half shit um, I suspect the guys who graded all of this you know they should be shot to be honest because you've got super grade which is brand new and unissued you've got grade one which has had some slight use and grade two which is heavy use i.e. grommets missing, stitching's coming apart, buttons missing wear and tear and mould etc 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 so there we have it, just a heads up guys um, if you are interested in these Lavu tents um, I'm going to put a link to Wilderness Leisure underneath because, as I say, they've got some left. And when I was running yesterday, we opened up two packets and checked and they were both brand new, which is what you should get, I assume. So just a heads up, guys. Go careful. Thanks for watching and stay funky. <laughs>